Thank you, Christian. It took me away two minutes of my introduction. It's a good thing. The horse is here to stay, but the automobile is only a novelty effect. Can you imagine the sentence? Who said the sentence? It was the president of the Michigan Saving Bank back in 1903 that told to the lawyer of Henry Ford and told him not to invest into Ford. This was 1903. By 1920, the company of Ford was worth $1.2 billion. Nowadays, it's almost $47 billion. Good evening, everyone. As Christian told you, my name is Antonio. I'm 42 years old. I'm married. My wife is sitting here. Two kids. I did an MBA. I'm here in Bangkok since 2019. And I'm very happy to be here tonight and happy that so many people uh, are interested in blockchain. As you can see, what is blockchain? I, uh, how can I, can I bring it nearer to you? So always when we talk about blockchain, we always think it is something like a revolution. You know, oh my God, blockchain, what is it? In my opinion, it's more an evolution of what is happening. So after this evening, I really hope that you leave from this room with question marks. I don't want you to leave the room and say, yeah, we buy Bitcoin now because we're gonna get rich or whatever. Huh? I want to go out and think, say, I think I have to watch into blockchain. <laughs> <laughs> Tonight, we are talking about, I will do a little introduction. Where is our world now? What is the common denominator at the moment? Then we will talk about re or evolution, everything, and as I call it personally, our financial DNA. I will explain you hopefully after what it is. And at the end, what is blockchain and explaining some basic concept. Why here? Because I can assure you blockchain can be explained in three minutes. So as Christian gave me around 30 minutes, I had to fill up the 27 minutes before. <laughs> uh, back in 2015, the UN set a lot of uh, goals. They are called sustainable goals. At the moment, we are hammered with a lot of topics from debt prices, financial inclusion, whatever. The UN had said back in 2015 some goals that have to be reached by 2030. That means exactly in less than seven years. We will see. No poverty, zero hunger, good health, quality education, gender equality, clean water and sanitation, affordable and clean energy, and decent work, economic growth, industry, reduced inequalities, sustainable cities, responsible consumption, climate action, life below water, on land, and peace and justice all over the world. This all by 2030 from the UN. We will see. Huh? So what is the common denominator of all these goals that we have? Sustainability. Does anybody know what sustainability means? Sustainability means I do something, I do it in the way that the next after me can still use it. Huh? Uh -huh. We reduce waste. It waste, it can be the waste that we know, but in every topic we can work in a way that things stay sustainable. Hmm? For example, fishing. You go tuna fishing, you fish only from November to December in a certain area, and then you don't fish the whole year, so that in that area, tuna fish is gonna grow again. So it's sustainable fishing. Uh, this is sustainability. So when we talk about sustainability, people always think that, oh my God, if I don't put my plastic there, or if I don't put my paper on the side, this will happen. Uh, the world will go down if we're not sustainable. It's over, it's over. I can assure you, ladies and gentlemen, 
the world as we know it is in much, much worse stuff than we have now. When we talk about sustainability, we talk about humankind. We talk about that we stay on this planet. Because believe me, the planet doesn't need humans, doesn't need it at all. Of course, there can be, if you think back through millions of years ago, dinosaurs were the most sustainable <laughs> biological things that were living on Earth. But nobody really knows why. We think it was an asteroid that wiped away the dinosaurs, so they don't exist anymore. Yeah? So we evolved. So in the DNA of world, I would say that Earth has evolution DNA. Yeah? So everything that is on our Earth somehow stops to go and it evolves all the time. And when I say everything, also our financial system evolves. So this is the financial system that we know. Everybody know what is this? It's a bank, right? Financial intermediate, they decide where your money is, where it goes and what you do. And this is our financial system. The idea of the system, you can see it here, is a set of institutions such as a bank, insurance companies and stock exchanges that permit the exchange of funds. This we all understand. This is our financial system. But if we go back around 5,000 years, people didn't have any financial system. They had trade, they were trading. So the fisher was giving his 10 fishes to the bauer and he was giving him an apple or whatever. Hmm? But was it sustainable with time? No, it was not sustainable because the guy that had 20 kg of rice, he had to travel all the way down for getting one kg of meat. So it was like, somehow it doesn't work, right? So what happened? They said, we have to find something better. And this was the first coin that our humanity used. It's called Electrum. And they used an alloy of gold and silver. Why gold and silver? Because they couldn't take stones. Because everybody could have stone, right? So they said, let's put some gold coins and they will have a value. And so we, gave, we started to give a value. This was around 2,680 years ago. Uh, it was 6,700 years before Christ. It took to humanity <laughs> a thousand years, a thousand years to switch to banknotes. Can you imagine that? A thousand years. So that's why I'm talking about <coughs> financial DNA, the trade, the exchange. The giving value to something is deep in our DNA. It's really, really deep, but it evolves with time. So what was the problem of the coins? They were very heavy, very, very heavy. You know, the pirates, they had all these big treasures of gold and coins or whatever. And they said, there must be a way to make it easier. There must be a way to make it easier. So the first bank notes. The name says it all. It was a note from the bank. That is what it is. The bank or the person will just say on a paper sheet says that Christian uh, that is living in Bangkok was saying to the guy that is living in Phnom Penh, say, yeah, yeah, he has 200 coins that are lying here by me, don't worry. If you have this paper, you can give him the stuff because he can assure you that he has the 200 coins. These were the first banknotes. This is an early banknote of England. Huh? Here, 1660, 200 libra or pounds, whatever. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? You have a lot of trust in the Bank of England to accept this paper in exchange of your house. You agree with me? You have to be, I mean, they were coming to you and they say, I give you this paper, you give me your house. Can you imagine? 
they were not that smart. Nowadays, they would just put here a zero, you know? So our system started on a trust basis. So people started to trust people that had money, institution, banks, and whatever. Trust. And here is where people start to not understand what blockchain is or what evolution in the financial system is because we are used to go to the bank, we are used to the common way how our financial system works because we trust the bank. I don't want to talk about Credit Suisse, what happened now, huh? you know if everybody goes to the bank now and says I want my money back then they have a problem. They have a problem, they could give you the money. That's a fact. Because we trust them huh? and we leave it there. Even if they don't have it, they don't have it, but we leave it there. Now, does everybody of you know how a computer works? Do everybody use a computer? Laptop? Yes, huh? No. But the most of you? We use it, but we don't know how it works. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Can you read, can you read all what's here? It's, it's, it's okay for the back, what is written? I give you 30 seconds to read this one. Okay. You raise your hand when you're finished. No, but yeah, it's, it's too difficult to it's, it's too difficult. Too difficult, right? So they are all people. Who Absolutely. <laughs> Agree. Do you know if I would tell you, Christian, can you can you put me on the email all this text in the email? You know how to do it in a matter of seconds. You know how to do it to put yes. this thing? Yeah. Is it a what? picture? Or is, is, it? It? Yeah. is this a picture? Or? So this is no, no, This is this is this is, this is how Microsoft explains copy-paste. Yeah. <laughs> okay? Does everybody know what copy-paste is? Raise your hand for all those who don't know what copy-paste is. <laughs> okay, now we are to the point. So when you say blockchain, I don't understand. Huh? Remember copy-paste. Huh? You know how copy-paste works. You don't need to know what is in the back with, with uh, bitmap, record or whatever. You don't know it, but you know how it works, and you know for what you have to use it, right? Now, read, I give you 10 seconds to read this one. Raise your hand when you finish. Do you understand what it means, right? This is the core of blockchain. Huh? Blockchain, as it was created, is just peer to peer to make a transaction without a bank. Finish. I make a transaction between me and Christian directly. There is no need of a bank or an ATM. I make it clear to you. When you go to the to take a coffee at the coffee machine, you have to imagine the coin is the Bitcoin. Huh? The Coke is what you want, and the machine, the machine is the bank. So when you put, I don't give the coin directly to the guy that delivered the Coke to the machine. I need the person in between to get me giving the money, so the coke it costs one franc. But in the machine I put two francs because I have to pay also the guy that installs me the machine to get the coke. I don't take the coke directly, right? Just to make it roughly what blockchain is. So you don't have any intermediary entity in between. 
makes this sense to you. Blockchain is a method of recording information that makes it impossible or difficult to the system to be changed. If we think at the banknotes, if we think at banks, let's go back. Blockchain, the big evolution or revolution that we have in blockchain is that it's much simpler. <coughs> it's not just based on trust. What is written in the blockchain, you cannot change it. It's impossible to change. There is no way to change what is in the blockchain. A blockchain is a distributed shared ledger that duplicates and shares transactions. We will see after what distribute means and what the ledger is. You can also say that it's decentralized. Decentralized means there is no central entity. It doesn't mean that it does, there is no control, but it's not only one entity that controls it. It's a network of controlling, and there are much, many, many people, let's say, in the network that validate and control everything. So what is a ledger? A ledger is nothing more than a digital or physical logbook. A ledger is just a logbook. When you do the Buchhaltung, huh? this, is a, this is a ledger in the blockchain. It just records what is done, what transaction. Now we are talking about financial blockchain. It's called DeFi, decentralized finance. Decentralized, as I said before, it's not done by one entity by one office or whatever. Now, decentralized refers to the transfer of control and decision making from a centralized entity to a distributed network, network or accountancy, for example, centralized. Now, when you talk about blockchain, you have, if you go in, and now I go a little bit deeper in the, in the things, when you will read about blockchain, you will always hear the word consensus mechanism. What is this consensus mechanism? How this blockchain works with a consensus mechanism? This is nothing more than an agreement that the network has to reach in order to do a transaction. That's why it's blockchain so secure. <coughs> but there must be a central an agreement between all everyone. Then you have Proof of work. This is Bitcoin. What is proof of work? This is the consensus mechanism, which is Bitcoin. And proof of work are miners that, how can I explain it? In order to create blockchain, there must be a big computing system that have to solve mathematic questions. So that's why when you read in the news that Bitcoin is very electricity consuming, it's not because the Bitcoin eats electricity, it's because for creating the blockchain as a network, it needs a lot of energy. But this, you have to think that it was the first blockchain that was created 10 years. What happened? In blockchain, things evolved too. And Proof of stake. The proof of stake is different. Proof of stake, everybody that is a so called validator, so Christian, me, and my wife are validator, the person that has more validation power that is given by the community. So if everybody of you holds a coin, let's say first row. It's all staking. Staking means not nothing else than lending to someone. I give the money coins to Christian in order that he, he can validate into the blockchain. Now, the validator with more staking power, if more people give trust, if the community of the blockchain gives more power to Christian, Christian will have also more uh, power in the consensus mechanism of staking. It doesn't mean that it makes it centralized, but it's just the community decides where we stake. We want to stake who we want to give the stakes. Smart contract. This is also a very common uh, definition in blockchain. Smart contract is that on the blockchain, 
there's clearly def defined what you can do. For example, um, I make an example in the visa section of the embassy. We could introduce the so-called smart contract. I could say that the person that works, that has a big income and is married to a Swiss, will automatically get a visa. Huh? I can put this on the blockchain and everybody that puts that that has these things, which is a so-called smart contract, the blockchain or the system will issue the visa. So what happens? Again, it's not centralized. You don't have any person deciding. You can put in the blockchain the rules to do something. Smart <coughs> contracts. Here is, as I told you before, the block for this. I will switch a bit further because blockchain use cases is not only cryptocurrency. We have we can use blockchain in, in everything. You can use blockchain in a lot of topics. And now I would like to show you very quick a video. They also discover something called the blockchain. Then they wonder how it works. Blockchains are a series of transactions that are grouped into blocks. These blocks are presently linked together through encryption, which stores the data securely and prevents someone from changing the history. This chain of blocks forms a public transaction ledger, which can be private or public blockchain. In a public blockchain, anyone can review all the transactions publicly. Hong Kong, 
or uh, even uh, in Latin America, we have blockchain being used for a lecture for house property, for example, you could, uh, that is in, I think, in uh, Brazil. They already use blockchain <laughs> for property, to put your property on a blockchain. Uh, and then, of course, cryptocurrency. Cryptocurrency, I'm not here to talking about cryptocurrency because most of you, they think that blockchain is cryptocurrency. No, blockchain is the system and cryptocurrency is just the mean that you use on, on that blockchain. So, blockchain, the first one, you use Bitcoin. On Ethereum blockchain, for example, you use Ethereum, but it depends, you can use depends on blockchain. Every blockchain has a cryptocurrency. So it's not only Bitcoin that we have. You have coins and token. This is maybe something that is interesting to know. When they talk to you about coins, it's because it's the native cryptocurrency of the blockchain. So Ethereum is the coin of the Ethereum blockchain. But if you use, uh, I don't know, XY coin that works on the Ethereum blockchain, it's called a token. Uh, so there are two types of tokens. You have fungible tokens, this is like, let's call it Bitcoin or whatever, because you can exchange it. And then you have non-fungible tokens. This is, in my opinion, really the future of economy. Non-fungible token is something that you have on your mobile device that says that I'm owning a house or uh, I have the rights about uh, I don't know what. And it's only one token, non-fungible token. I cannot exchange it. But the owner of the NFT, non-fungible token, is also the owner of the property, for example, of a house or whatever it is on the non-fungible token. At the moment, they are a lot in arts. They started, I don't know if you ever heard, with these uh, NFTs that went up like crazy. They're just like small uh, pictures of apes or whatever. And yeah, now comes the question, why do people invest let's say, in cryptocurrency or Bitcoin. It's, this is always the big question. Uh, why should I buy Bitcoin or why should I buy cryptos? Well, I wrote it here, people invest in cryptocurrency for the same reason anyone invests in anything. Huh? If somebody buys Bitcoin, it's not because he uses the blockchain. If I own cryptocurrency, it's not because I use the blockchain, and be very honest with you, I cannot use the blockchain. I know that the fear is like the bitmap before, the copy and paste, but I cannot work at Ethereum as an engineer, I have no idea. So I invest in something because I think that it may bring some return. This is the pure thing because why people invest in cryptocurrency. There is no other reason. Yes? Isn't there a difference if you invest in shares? It is not a pure speculation. You invest in shares because you are convinced that a, an enterprise you're investing in has a good performance and you eventually have an increase in share. But if you invest, maybe you can explain me, if you invest in bitcoins, isn't that simply pure speculation? Absolutely. That's why I'm saying it's an evolution of the financial system that we will find. So everybody of us here play, pays already the system of the payment system that we are using now. <coughs> it's already digital. It's just in our minds that we think that we are using cash. How many of you do really use cash nowadays? Only those are with money on the bank. Yeah, of course. But you also use credit cards, right? Mm -hmm. Can you do a booking with cash on booking.com when you go to a holiday? Yes. Yes. You can? Yes. You can? Yes. It's possible. 
Yes. Okay. When you arrive at the hotel. Them when you arrive at the hotel. Okay. 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 That's okay. okay. yeah, true. But you are right. It becomes more and more complicated because I experienced already that DHL, and I wanted to send a letter to the O. Sorry, we prefer you pay with the car. We do not deal with cash anymore. And I said, okay, I will change the provider because I said, sorry, cash, I'm sorry for me, cash remains something I need, I see that in the As I was telling before, this is the DNA that we have. Absolutely. We have a cash DNA. It's thousands of years. We cannot expect to change our mind in a few years only because of Mr. Satoshi came to the great idea to revolutionize the financial system. It will need time, but the time will come. Our world is digital. If you talk to my daughter that plays on her little uh, iPad, they talk already in Bitcoin. She's eight years old. She came to me a few months ago and said, Papa, I have 10 Bitcoins now. Am I rich? Of course, it's just in the game. But if you start with eight years old and you talk with eight, you talk about Bitcoin when you are 20 and they go to her and say, you know what, my daughter, invest in Nestle because you will get 2% every year. She will tell me, no, I will buy cryptocurrency because I will do most probably in two years 70% on it. Because why? Because it's scars. It's a finished number of coin. And when there is a finished number of coin, of course it is at the moment you invest in <coughs> cryptocurrency because you hope that the value in fiat in the, in, the, in the system now the value goes up. I invest. So, so yes. It has no value. You speculate that you will find an idiot, an idiot who will pay more than you. You pay an idiot because it has no intrinsic value. It, well, it, yeah, it is okay. We can talk about this after because the value of of cryptocurrency is what they do. If you take coins in financial system to transfer the money that we have now, if you want to transfer from Bangkok to Zurich. Have you any idea what the, how much you pay in fees? How much you pay? I was talking about Bitcoin, not about yeah. blockchain. No, no, but, but, but you have the, this is the value that you have to send in the blockchain at the end is the, is, the, is the cryptocurrency to do the transaction. You need the cryptocurrency to get to Zurich. So the person in Zurich gets it. You agree. So it's fast, it's in real time, and low cost. very low. Bitcoin is quite expensive still, but we have really, truly cryptocurrency that they can move money in, in trillions in seconds, in seconds. So there is absolutely an intrinsic value there because the value is the use case. But that you can use do that is every currency. Bitcoin is hot air. Hot air. But, but the Swiss franc is not all there. I mean, that's the difference. Yeah, yeah, yeah you're right. It, it's, it, as I was telling you before, it's very difficult to change the, the paradigm in our head. We see a banknote, let's say this is 100 francs. Mm -hmm. We only have trust that this is 100 francs. It's a piece of paper. Yeah. is a piece of paper that was printed by the National Bank saying that this one has a value of 100 Swiss francs. We trust our system. We have something in our head. But at the end of the day, I can tell you something. If you go down to, there is an island somewhere, uh, I think in the Indian Ocean, Huh? They, they live still uh, like thousands of years ago and you go there and you give them money they will watch at you and they say well, what's that? 
for what I, for what, what should I do with that? Huh? We, our DNA is just in our head that we think that we have something valuable in our hand. But a hundred dollar, a hundred Swiss francs, if I put it in the fire, it will burn. It will burn out. Yes. Of your values, how many of your values you have in fiat money and in Bitcoin? Yes. I have a friend, he told me he no have any more euro, he has only Bitcoin. What is this? It's What is you? You have how much? I, I, it's, uh, it's, uh, of course I, I have still money, the normal money that we know, of course. Yeah. But how Because much of your worth altogether? You have 40% in Bitcoin or It's difficult to say. Huh? I don't know. I really don't know. I really don't know. <laughs> how the Bitcoin is going up, up but it is also going down. Definitely. And yeah. why? Because of the how many people want it and how many people sell it. At the moment, as I'm telling before, it's an investment. People are just investing. There is no yet the use case. The use case is coming. I could go further, for example, CBDC, Central Digital Bank Coins. Huh? This is a bank, they want to use blockchain because they see that blockchain is a good thing. You can, it takes away all the ATM, it takes away the Vostro Nostro bank account, Uh, we can send money within seconds, you can send money at 2 o'clock in the morning, uh, you can send it at 2 o'clock and one second it will be in Zurich. Banks, they know it. So there are bigger problems in this regulation. It's not regulated, the market, because people are not used to it. People don't know it. It's just not regulated. But I can tell you it's coming. 2024, Europe banks are really working on it to regulate first of all this because it was in all media is every time he said that cryptocurrency is a scam you will lose your money i can tell you in the 80s and maybe you will know when you were going to the bank or saying people i'm going to invest in the stock market what was the answer that in the 80s people were giving to you are you crazy stock market this is just for gamblers Yeah. Right? Yeah, what but this said. one is more for cash. So it's really, it's really hot there because if we even gambling is safe, for example, <laughs> that's really safe. We we yeah. we invest. I never would uh, invest in Bitcoin. That's for me. It's a choice. Yeah. Nobody, nobody. Yeah, the system for this is doing well. And now we're going to try something. You say at the end of the day, but I think at the end of 100 years. Well, then we should uh, think more like this. If I buy a house, maybe in 100 years it's still existing. But if I buy hot air, okay. <laughs> <laughs> And maybe I say something. In how many countries this happened? That you have the money, go to Venezuela, before in Argentina and other countries, go to Russia. You have certain amount of money, and I say it's only half worth exactly the same. No, it's not the same. It's you must diversify. You can diversify also some bitcoins in some. Yeah, but it's not behind it. It's exactly. It's not it, it is. It. It's the money. It is, it, is, it is always a hot topic. You know, there is. People that say the cryptocurrency is hot air, it's not right, then you have people that say, mm, maybe I could watch it, and then you have people know I would never buy Bitcoin. But I can tell you, I'm happy that it's like this. Because if everyone would go in one direction, our system would not work. Huh? So in the 80s, there were people that became rich. You know how much the Apple share was in 87? 8 cent. 80 cent. Exactly. 8 cent. The first Bitcoin Imagine if you would have put a thousand Swiss francs. People they were telling you in Apple, are you crazy? Or Microsoft? Huh? IBM. Like Henry Ford. Huh? We see the president of a bank, saving banks of United States, said that the horse will be never be replaced. 
and now here to here we are. At the moment, if we take it from that perspective, yes, as I told you before, at the moment we are in an investment phase. It is like, you know, after people are always more intelligent, you know, after things happen, now if you talk in the crypto space, you are only good if you own Bitcoin, but if you go to your forum in the, in the internet back in 2012 and I read them, there was a guy saying that Bitcoin will reach over $10,000. He said this in 2012. In the Bitcoin forum, they said him, you are crazy. It's never going to happen. 65000 arrived the Bitcoin. This guy is still writing in the forum, just to, just to mention. So it's always a shift of mind that we have, but I'm not saying that blockchain is better or that our system is not good. I'm only saying that we are evolving and it's not right to stick on the place where we are. I just say, watch into it. There is always something good coming from the future that we can do and there is always something good that we did that we can implement in everything. I just say we will. Yes, I understand, but what I'm worried about, the direction we can... Sorry? I'm worried about humanity's direction they take. When we speak about a share of thought, for instance, that became hundreds and hundreds and hundreds times more valuable. That was because, part of it was because of speculation and the, the the result was then eventually sometimes also some big crisis we had when it crashed. Now, what I want just to reflect on is when we say the people that is based on a blockchain system, when these bitcoins gains tremendous values. For me, it's not explainable. <coughs> the only reason I can imagine is hope of some people that they will gain money without working, without production, without having something. But behind. when you buy stock, is exactly the same. No. 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 When no. 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 But just what are you gonna be? I just I just tell you something. The, the share goes up with the money, right? When living cost goes up, the share of course the market goes with and then you think okay I invested in the share, which is a good thing. In our system it works like this, but in a closed system where one bitcoin I, I just bring an example of Bitcoin, huh? where one Bitcoin, if this computer is worth one Bitcoin, it can be worth one Bitcoin, even if it evolves in 10 years. It's a, it's a closed system, it's a finished system. Now, even if we talk Bitcoin, we still think in Swiss francs. The future is we will think in Bitcoin or whatever cryptocurrency it is. Now at the moment, we buy crypto because we want money in this system where we are living now. In future, if we use, let's say, Bitcoin, it will not matter how much. It's like saying, how much is 100 euro now in, in, in Denmark, for example. Nobody cares. Denmark doesn't exist anymore. It's the same thing. Now the people in Europe, they think in Europe. They don't think anymore in Denmark. It's finished. This is the point. Now we think in Swiss francs, in dollars. The point of the future of blockchain is the cryptocurrency will become the currency. Not now. I will not see it either. I'm pretty sure. But maybe my daughter. This is the point. Yes. 
I have to say, I, I still don't understand blockchain, but it doesn't matter because you said we have to remember only copy paste. <laughs> so I have a copy paste question to you. Yes. Um, yesterday or a few days ago, the Ministry of Finance announced that starting from January 2024, capital transfers have to be taxed, are taxable in Thailand. So if I transfer my pension fund, from Switzerland to Thailand, I will have to pay tax, right? Because the bank, mm -hmm. they can um, check all these payments. Yes. Now, the question, if I transfer my money in bitcoins, can I avoid that? That, that I don't have to pay tax? <laughs> Not really. <laughs> I agree with the transaction of bitcoins on Thai power flow. Yeah, that is the only thing. That's the only thing. That's the only thing. That's the only thing. That's the only thing. In Thailand, yes. In Thailand. I talk about Thai power Thailand. Because if we would transfer it somewhere else, then we would get the full value. But as I said, as it is not yet regulated, uh, you can still uh, cash out in Switzerland, for example, you have Swiss World or whatever, you can cash out cryptocurrency, Bitcoin, if you're real, the main cryptocurrency. But Thailand, they have huge taxes on uh, cryptocurrency, changing it in fiat. But, but, if the new minister that is coming, maybe, <laughs> maybe, there is some hope. I heard, no? I was just... They were just saying that you were giving uh, cryptocurrency uh, 10,000 baht or something like that was in the room, but still nobody knows how this should work. But if it works, it would be one of the first countries that eventually will use cryptocurrency because if you give 10,000 baht in Bitcoin or whatever, you have to give even the possibility to, to spend them somewhere, you agree? Maybe it's just in the hotels or whatever, but it would be one of the first countries that really, really would use cryptocurrency. But there is one company in Central America or something. Yeah, Ecuador. Argentina. Ecuador. 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 Bitcoin. Oh, no. Yes. Yeah. Okay. You can go to McDonald's and buy Bitcoin. That's right. Yes. And actually, back in here, let's say people say, you don't want to get rich without working. I was hoping to get <laughs> how to get rich without working. <laughs> <laughs> so this I'm aware already, yeah? I do my best. I just wanted to let Bitcoin is actually the only cryptocurrency. When you hear another crypto, it's not a cryptocurrency, but it's, a, it's Bitcoin is an altcoin. It's an alternative coin to Bitcoin. <clears throat> when you talk about crypto, you only talk about Bitcoin. Huh? The total market cap of the whole cryptocurrency around is around one trillion US dollar. The stock market is a hundred times more. So there is a lot of air up. So if somebody wants to do some money, it's not bad to diversify in cryptocurrency because at the end, people want to make money in this system. And why not diversify in assets? Copy paste. You don't need to know what is happening. <laughs> and if somebody wants to buy anyway cryptocurrency, here you can scan this code, and this is a good <laughs> crypto <laughs> exchange. Yes, sorry.